been making something called Godot types, a collection of Godot prototypes to make small games and projects while I continue to learn Godot. I wanted to show my progress so far this week. And it's open source, so you can go ahead and check out the code too if it's helpful. The first one I started with is smart input. You can see down here that we've got controller icons showing because I have an Xbox One controller plugged into my computer. Now, if I go ahead and unplug my controller, which will turn it off because it's, I don't have batteries in it, it uh, the icons will change. I have a wired controller plugged in. Let me unplug that. Okay, so I unplugged that and uh, you can see those icons changed. Um, if I plug the Xbox controller back in and then power it on to connect it, those icons should change to be the controller icons. If it connects, come on, controller. It's funny how when working on things, it always works, but then when you demo it, it sure doesn't. Okay, great, we're connected. And if I press the buttons on the controller, it shows the controller icon. Now if I go and press my keyboard, it changes to the keyboard icons. This seems like a weird place to start, but I really like those aspects of making games, those UI and uh, the user interface and the user experience. And figuring that out was not too bad. I used the uh, underscore input callback to check what the last input was and also check for the controller connected and disconnected events to change. And it prioritizes controllers because if you have a controller plugged in, I think it's safe to assume you want to use a controller. And then if you press your keyboard, it changes back to keyboard. So that's where I started smart input. Then I knew I wanted to make a bullet hell game. So I thought, let's start with bullet patterns. And you know, quick aside, you can turn off sound effects because wow, that, that was annoying. So you can see here we've got an enemy firing straight, a single shot. Here's an enemy firing double straight. Here's a spread shot wiggly. They're following a sinusoidal pattern. And then we've got spread straight. We've got circle straight, and then we've got spread arc. This was a really fun exercise in building these different patterns in isolation. And for you know me as I'm using the game, I thought it'd be neat to show you how that works. So in Godot, I just have enemies in the scene tree. And then over here, my apologies that it's a little small. You can select fire pattern and bullet movement to change those. So that was a way where I took, I know I wanted to make a game, but I wasn't just so sure how to make all these different firing patterns. I haven't done that in Godot yet. So I made this first, then I, all those enemies are scenes in Godot. If you don't know what Godot is, it's probably boring as heck, but um, drop them in the bullet heck. So this is a shoot em up game where you pilot this little ship. You got a health bar, I'll get damaged. And you can see my health decreased by one. Enemies spawn in waves, and we have those stars moving. There's the same number of stars, they just have random speed and alpha values uh, and placements. So when they reach the end of the screen, they go back to the top, they get some randomized, and they come back. You can see I added the smart input down in the lower left. So um, now if I switch to the controller, uh, we can do that. And uh, I really like making shoot 'em ups, they're fun. I would like to make a full game of one of these. Figuring out the waves was interesting. It's just an array of ones that spawn in each wave. And um, I turned the sound effects off, but the sound effects work too. Maybe I should turn those back on eventually. When I back out of this, I will. Um, you can see they spawn. If you just hold the fire button, it's a slower rate of fire. And if you mash it, it's faster. Oh, we won. And um, <laughs> Anyway, let's turn sound effects back on. So we can see that. I also made a platformer. 
called Devil Boy. And uh, let me go into there. So Devil Boy is this platformer, kind of like Mario, uses assets from Kenny, one bit style. And uh, I learned a lot about tile maps, tile sets, physics, that kind of stuff, uh, camera that follows the player. And it shows a windscreen. So that's Devil Boy. And then the latest one I made is called Bunny Blaster, which isn't too dissimilar. It's kind of like a Mega Man type game where you uh, also use his Kenny assets. And there's platforming, there's one way collisions, so you can jump up, but you won't fall down. And that was fun getting bullets working. And, Basic enemy logic and AI. That's it for Godo types for this week. Next up, I'm going to work on making probably a visual novel, a JRPG, kind of like the old Dragon Quest and Final Fantasies. I'm going to make a strategy RPG, kind of like Fire Emblem, just the foundational parts of it, an action RPG, just learning about top down tile sets. And then when I'm done with those, I'll move on to 3D. We're, it's March 12th, so yeah, almost near halfway through the month. And then once March reaches an end, I'll go ahead and move on to actually making and completing finished games. But so far, so good. Continuing to enjoy Godot. And if you want to check these Godot types out, you can go to the Itch page which is brettschalupa.itch.io slash types, and you can run it in the browser or download it for your operating system. There's also the source is on GitHub at github.com slash brettschalupa slash types, And it's all public domain, so if you find anything useful, you can use it yourself. Made it with Godot Skeleton, which I made a video about previously. It's been quite nice and useful. That's all I've got this week. Thank you, and see you next week. Bye.